City Council at large, Bill Dwight. Thank you, thank you all for coming today. I'm, I am not your, I'm not your host. I'm just starting. So, um, and I'll do that. I'll just get right on this. You know, it's, I admire anyone who signs up for public service. I'm especially grateful for folks who enter public service for the right reasons. Uh, people who are inspired to run for public office are motivated by a variety of things, uh, some bad, some good. Some bad reasons by my reckoning would be old self-promotion, power hunger, political division, greed. <laughs> you know, all the cynical stereotypes that uh, are ascribed to we politicians. But public service is and should be a virtuous aspiration. It's, you know, it's built right into the name. I mean, it's service to the public. Those are good things. And I'm certainly not so naive as to think that uh, there aren't those people in office who don't fall under any of those bad categories. Right, BJ? <laughs> but, but those attitudes are, they're not qualifications that we should expect from the people we want to represent us. And that's why I'm particularly glad and grateful that Elisa has, at long last, decided to run for office. And, and this is her first campaign. Not, she's worked on many campaigns. This is the first one where she has to really endure pain, agony, <laughs> and subject herself to all sorts of humiliation. <laughs> Uh, while, and as I said, while this is her first uh, campaign, service to the community is not new to her. Elisa's entire resume is devoted to working to improve the circumstances of people in crisis and in stress. And she's uniquely qualified to negotiate and navigate through really difficult conflicts. I mean, she, she's not going to inflame divisions. But rather, she's going to broker with all the stakeholders, and she'll seek out the common agreements and build on them towards solutions. And that requires a lot of personal effort and dedication. Energy, Elisa, is committed to, to provide. Now, Elisa's not running against someone. She's running for something. And that's an, a very important distinction. She's offering her experience, her sensitivity, her humor, her resolve, her conscience, and her integrity all of which he has in great abundance, to advocate for the best interests of all the folks in Ward 7 and beyond in the city. Alisa Klein is running for all the right reasons. And she's asking you for your vote and your support, and I hope that when you know you get a chance to talk to her today, if you, have a, if you don't know her before, or if she comes to your door, that you'll take the time to share your concerns and hopes and hear what she has to say. And if you do, I suspect you will, more than likely, agree with me that she would make an excellent city council. So I, I, I'm, I'm barely the appetizer. Uh, coming up next is uh, the vice president of the city council. I forgot to mention, I'm the president of the city council and of Hair Club for Men. Uh, <laughs> The Vice President of the City Council here is here as well. Please welcome Jesse Adams. Hello, thank you for being here. I'm supporting Lisa Klein for Ward 7 because we need a candidate who brings to the council a vision of the ward in all of Northampton with a wider lens than the current council. To that point, Elisa has spent her career working for social justice, community building, and positive social change. We need her intelligence, vision, experience, and skill set. Affecting change can happen here on the local level and does, but since we are influenced so greatly by what occurs on the state and federal levels, it is necessary for us as counselors to advocate to those other levels of government. Elisa fully understands this. Elisa understands the history of Ward 7 and of Northampton. 
and she knows how important the history is to who we are now as a community and where we are going. She understands the history of our community, but unlike the current counselor who was trapped in the past, she has a forward-thinking vision. From my conversations with Elisa, I know she will do the things that a good counselor needs to do. She will scrutinize the budget and offer viable solutions to our budgetary challenges. She will be an accessible voice and a responsive representative for all of her constituents. She will offer fact-based arguments and intelligent opinions. Ward 7 needs a counselor who has the knowledge, breadth of experience, and vision that is worthy of the ward. Ward 7 needs a responsive, intelligent counselor who speaks for the ward, not for the television cameras. Ward 7 needs real leadership. Ward 7 needs Elisa Klein. so much everybody. Uh, this is a really a wonderful sight to see so many people here on this uh, very hot evening. And as a resident of uh, Ward 7, I am very proud to be able to introduce the candidate formally to you tonight. Uh, along with my friend and uh, former colleague of the City Council, uh, Marianne Labarge. Um, I would like, I, as I look around the room, I see a lot of people uh, who do live in Ward 7, but I also see a lot of people who live in other wards in the city. And I think it really speaks to your interest in having uh, somebody on the council who can, uh, as, as Jesse and Bill alluded to, have this broader vision. I would like to encourage everybody to go to Elisa's website. Uh, she has a wonderful web website and you can read all about some of the things that she's done. But if you're not in Ward 7, don't think that you can't make a difference. Don't think that you can be, have a serious impact in this election. It's so helpful to have you tell everybody that you look over that Ward 7 uh, voter list and tell your friends and, uh, and uh, to, to vote Elisa. So you can make a contribution, you can help on the campaign, you can do many, many things to make this happen. So please go on the website and um, um, pitch in when you can. Uh, but tonight, um, aside from what you'll learn on the website and what you've heard here, um, we thought that we would um, share with you what we thought were essential um, attributes of a successful city councilor. Now, most of us, when we, you know, get elected and we go on to city council, we've never done this job before. So we kind of have an idea what we're getting into, but not, in, not entirely. The only person I think that knew was uh, uh, Bill Dwight, who was a counselor, gave it up, and came back. He knew what he was getting into. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so there are some attributes that, that, that I think are essential. I think Marianne would agree with me. Uh, so aside from being a self-starter, highly educated, self-supporting, from a very uh, young age, Elisa really scores high on the five things that we're going to talk about tonight, briefly. Uh, first of all, we, we think that uh, you have to have knowledge and understanding of the culture of the ward and its neighborhoods. So Elisa's been a Ward 7 resident now for over 14 years. And I know she's dedicated because she lived, she went away at some point, and lived in sunny California, and came back to this. <laughs> so you know she's dedicated. Uh, and the way I think she, I heard it described it was she loved the woods, she loved the trees, she loves, you know, she loves where the she lives in the people. Then the people, <laughs> the people, the people. Yes, you can't beat it, uh, as a fellow of California used to be. <laughs> The ability to listen and to be a counselor to all the people in the ward. People who have lived here for a long time and people who are newer to the ward. Uh, Elisa has been active in many grassroots neighborhood things to make uh, Ward 7 a better place. I believe she can represent all the people. Now. Uh, I, when I first uh, uh, met Elisa, she told me that she was going to go start doing door to door. And so we talked about that a little bit. And then I talked to her a few weeks after. And she said to me, you know, I love going door to door. 
I listened to people and I heard what they had to say and I empathized with them. At that particular point, I guess you'd make a great counselor because that's what you have to do. You have to really listen and you have to put yourself in their place. The other thing you have to do is you have to be able to communicate complex issues because um, you know we're going to please everybody all the time and some of the issues just aren't as simple as they, they appear and I believe that Elisa has the experience, proven experience, proven track record to be able to do this. Um, be open to changing one's mind and willing to compromise. As a trained mediator, Alisa brings her years of mediation practice and skills to the council. And uh, anybody who can work complicated issues in the Middle East can add a lot to, to Northampton. <laughs> <laughs> the ability to bring people together. Again, Alisa's experience has put a track record as a peacemaker. She will add value to the council. Now the last one's really, really important, and um, there's nobody who does this better than Marianne Labarge, and it's the ability to work really, really hard. Marianne doesn't know I'm going to say this, but I happened to be talking to a constituent of hers today, I mentioned Marianne, he says, oh yeah, she's always leaving little notes for me and little posters with yarn on them on my doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> so Marianne knows how to work hard, and she's going to talk just a little bit about that. Becoming a city councilor is not an easy job. It's what you're going to put into it by your heart, by your heart. I take every resident in my ward and even throughout the city, because I do represent throughout the city. We vote for many, many issues that are throughout the city. Yes, I do go with flyers. I have a lot of residents, and I do know my residents who have computers, who can afford anything that they tell me that they cannot afford, and I have Wendy Mazin, who in November, December of last year, hit 15 houses with me to the needy to bring them baskets from the Elks, and she could not believe it. She said, Marianne, if anybody ever tells me that they say, she always says, she knows her residents and who can afford it and who cannot. And I do. I care about them. I care about every resident on my ward in this city. I was born and raised here. I think it's very, very valuable. If you're going to become a counselor, you need to be available. Pick up that phone, and that's one thing that our council president needs to learn. It's when somebody calls, you get right back, Bill. <laughs> If you don't get back to them, you'll hear it all over the place. <laughs> like in your <Eric> presentations. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I'm not looking at the other counselor because I almost care what he does. Okay, because I don't like what he has done as a city counselor. Okay, I'm being very serious about this. I have respect for that counselor. But because of the directions that he was going in and attacking several of our department heads was the worst way you can go as a counselor because there are procedures of handling that. I have to say that, get out, Lisa, like I told you, knock on those doors. Keep in mind of your elderly people, your needy people on your board, your families. I, when there is any kind of construction going on my on my board, development or that. I always have meetings privately with my residents and the developers. Okay, we try to make a compromise before we hit that planning board. It might take us months, but we do it. You're not gonna make everybody happy. There are many resolutions that are coming forth now that I have, you know, some people possibly gonna be running against me because of the sidewalk, the vibrant sidewalks in Northampton, and also the drones. And I'd say, come out of the walls. You can come out of the walls and run against me. My husband served our country in the Army, and he agrees with the ordinance on drones. So figure it out. You're going to meet all different types of diversity on your ward, and I know many people on your ward. 
and listen. Look at them, listen, and feel from your heart. That's the whole value of being a city council. Pleasure tonight to introduce your next Ward 7 City Council. Thank you so much. I'm going to try not to shake through the whole speech. Um, thank you very much to all of you who introduced me, all four of you. I really appreciate that. Um, I also want to just acknowledge that we have some other city councilors here this evening. We have Colleen Carney. I, I don't know exactly where everyone is out here in the audience. Woo! Woo! Paul Spector is here. Um, is Owen in the house? Yes, he was. Owen Freeman Daniels from Ward 3, Pamela Schwartz Center Regrets. She's on the cake with her family. Um, but thank you all for being here. I really appreciate your endorsement, your support, and everything you've been teaching me about how to run a campaign. It's um, incredibly helpful. And thank you to Mayor David Markowitz, who I just found out is called Dinar. <laughs> Jeff Napolitano is my campaign manager, and um, I just want to say a huge thank you to him for accompanying me through all the details that it takes to run a campaign. It's actually quite, um, quite amazing how many details there are. Jeff Rosen. Jeff Rosen, I want to thank him for all his support, um, both logistical and emotional through the campaign. Uh, to the amazing Julia Shevin, who I think is sitting at the front. Um, Julia is, she's the campaign treasurer, and she is the most competent, efficient, reliable person I have ever met. Um, and I'm so grateful to you, Julia, for agreeing to do all of the crazy little business things that are involved in running a campaign. Um, to my beloved neighbor, Heidi Stevens. for all of the graphics for the campaign, all of the website graphics, all these beautiful signs. She's an incredible designer. If anybody needs a graphic designer, call Heidi. She will work to the, her fingers to the bone to get things right for you. She's wonderful. And her husband and business partner, Justin O'Connor, who I think is in here, he helped design the website, so I'm really grateful to him as well. Everything's melted. <laughs> Um, I want to say thank you to Pamela Cobb, my neighbor and friend. I don't know if she's around, but she took all the pictures for the website and for, um, for the campaign. And um, my campaign team, I'm going to read off a list of names really quick. Emily Woodward, Linda Butler, Sadia Shevin, Ruth Ever, Trisha Lee, Layla Hussein, Lisa Baskin, Kevin Hale, Beth Demold, David Rondinas, Carbon, Ezekiel Baskin, and Barbara Golden. And I just want to say that there are additional spots on the campaign team. If anyone's interested, um, you can sign up, talk to people at the front table there. Um, I also want to point out to you two, uh, two of my colleagues in candidacy for city council. Gina Louise Chiara is here for more to vote for them because they are incredibly competent, amazing, skilled people who will um, bring a huge amount to the city council. And I am grateful to both of you for your help on my campaign. Um, and then closest to my heart is my partner, I'm not sure where she is, Amy. And supported me despite the fact that it means um, that I'm never home anymore and uh, she has played every role that is possible to play in a campaign from research 
researcher to transcriber of meeting minutes to um, just everything. She's door knocked with me. She's amazing. And I couldn't do this without her. So I really wanted to acknowledge that. So I'm just going to take a few more minutes. I know it's really hot. And I so appreciate your kind of being here through the, all the speeches um, in this heat. I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself and what I am running about. Um, I've been working since I was 12 years old, and really working, not just kind of earning an allowance. Um, with the money that I earned, I had to help my, my family pay for our utility bills and food, to put food on the table. Um, I've been supporting myself since the age of 18. I worked my way through college, cleaning houses and offices, and as a secretary. And since then, I've steadily worked full-time plus. Most recently, over the last eight years, owning and operating my own business as a public policy consultant to organizations that work on peace building and violence prevention. I tell you all of this because I want you to know that I'm not a stranger to hard times, um, and I'm not a stranger to hard work. And I will bring my personal knowledge of financial struggle and my personal work ethic to serving Ward 7 on the Northampton City Council. I want to assure everyone that I'll take the time to listen well to all of the residents of Ward 7, and I will work hard to find resources and ways to address your concerns. And most importantly, I want to work collaboratively with the residents of Ward 7 to make it the best place that it can be. Um, some of the things that I hope to work on for the city, um, I'll start with the city and then I'll get more specific about Ward 7. I want to make sure that all of the wards, oh, actually I start with Ward 7. Ward 7's residents, homeowners and renters alike, old timers and newcomers alike, can afford to live in the city. One of the things that I've heard doing door knocking is that people are really scared that they're going to lose their homes. Um, what this will take is not about hitting foreign languages in the schools against um, arts and music, art and music classes in our schools. Just as I believe that it must be our commitment as a society and as a community to prioritize our children's education and give them the tools to contribute the most that they can when they come back to our communities, I believe we can find new revenue streams that will allow our city and Ward 7 to thrive. I believe we can cut costs in ways that don't harm or degrade public services, schools, public safety, our roads, jobs, and the infrastructure it takes to run a city. I believe Northampton has already begun this work, but I think we can do more. Uh, for instance, I will bring my experience as a coalition builder and policy advocate to working with other city councilors in Northampton and throughout Western Massachusetts to address the inadequacy of local aid from uh, the state to the city. I will work on developing a regional coalition to advocate in the Massachusetts State House for changes that will expand funding to Western Massachusetts. I will work towards revamping the formula for funding to cities to ensure equitable and adequate distributions of state funds to Massachusetts cities. I'll work for state tax reforms that raise new revenue, not from low and middle income families, but from the highest income earners in the state. And locally, I'll work to expand Northampton's green and sustainability initiatives to save the city money so it can be used for other people-centered purposes. And that we'll conduct proactive outreach to residents of Ward 7 to offer them ways to reduce their energy costs. I support the cost savings that cons uh, the consolidation of Smith Oak and the school system can bring to Northampton. And I do believe that that can be done in ways that will preserve the unique nature of Smith Oak, the excellence of its uh, vocational education, and that can be respectful of how Smith Oak offers really magnificent benefits to this city. I'll work towards the long-term savings, long savings for the city and the residents of Ward 7 that comes from safe and organic approaches to maintaining and expanding local food resources, natural resources, and green spaces. Um, as an example, and specific to Ward 7, I'll work towards ensuring green and organic maintenance of Florence Fields on the Bean, what used to be the Bean Allard land on Meadow and Spring Street. So 
committed to working with the city to find ways to manage the increase in traffic um, that will come from people traveling to and from those eight playing fields. I will also tend to other Ward 7 specific issues that residents have been sharing with me, such as installing uh, proven traffic calming measures on Bridge Road in the area of JFK Middle School. Um, that's a, a big issue that's kind of coming down the pipe. Um, I would like to help to find resources to restore the hotel bridge in Leeds, um, and to fill potholes in places like Kennedy Road, Audubon Road. <laughs> Um, I am pro-arts, pro-education, pro-affordability, pro-sustainability, pro-local foods and businesses, pro-social justice, and pro-people. Uh, these are the values that will guide and undergird my work as a city councilor. And I am reliable, responsible, and resourceful, my three R's. And I look forward to working collaboratively with you, the residents of Ward 7, those of you who are from Ward 7, uh, to make our neighborhoods and homes the best that they can be. And thank you so much for being here. <laughs>